Welcome back. In this video, we're going to explore linear and angular speed. The objectives here will be to find the arc length using s equals r times theta, introduce linear speed of a particle, and introduce angular speed of a particle. So our first objective, the length of a circular arc, is defined by s equals r times theta. So recall that an arc is simply the, the portion of a circle. We're finding the portion of a circle's circumference that we want here to find out what that is. So if we want to find out the length of the arc, we would call that length s. And we will use our radius r and our central angle is theta. So we're using those parts of the, uh, of the circle. So and theta is simply an unknown angle or like x. Uh, so don't be uh, don't be thrown by that that notation. So a sample problem: a circle has a radius of four four inches. So that's our r. Calculate the length of the arc intercepted by a central angle of 240. So the length of the arc we want to calculate s intercepted by a central angle of 240 degrees. In order to calculate theta or what that is, theta must be in radians, right? So we had that earlier in our notes. So we need to convert the 240 to radians. So we'll quickly multiply 240 uh, times pi over 180 and simplify that and we'll get 4 thirds pi. Putting this into our formula, s equals 4 thirds pi times 4. s is equal to 16 thirds pi. And that is the length of our arc, 16 thirds pi. We want to put our units in there. It's going to be in inches. Objectives 2 and 3. We are going to explore linear speed and angular speed. Before we get started on that, we'll read our note here. The following formulas are used to analyze the motion of a particle moving at a constant speed along a circular path. So constant speed, clearly that's important, and on a circular path, so along an arc or around a circle. So our linear speed is calculated by the arc length divided by time, or s divided by t. This measures how fast the particle moves. The angular speed, that formula or that calculation is the angle theta, the central angle, divided by time. And that measures how fast the angle changes. So slightly different concepts there. So taking a sample from the book, we're going to calculate the linear speed. The second hand of a clock is 10.2 centimeters long. You see that over here in our diagram. Find the linear speed of the tip of this second hand. Well, our linear speed is calculated by s divided by t. First, we need to figure out s, and s is equal to r times theta. One revolution is 2 pi units. So s equals 2 pi times r. Our r, based on our diagram, the radius or the length of our second hand is 10.2. s is 2 pi times 10.2 or 20.4 centimeters. But we still need to plug this into our formula of s over t. So our linear speed s over t, we figured out our s was 20.4 from above, and we could divide this by 1. It would be, you know, 20.4 centimeters per, per minute. Uh, it looks like we want our t, though, to be in seconds, so we divide by 60, 20.4 pi divided by 60, and we put that in our calculator and it's going to spit out the 1.07 centimeters per second. Our second sample is finding angular speed. The blades of a wind turbine are 116 feet long. 
You might see some of these as you're driving up near Fond du Lac and Lake Winnebago. There's wind farms up there. Heller rotates at 15 revolutions per minute. So a full revolution is 2 pi. In one minute, there's 15 2 pi's taking place. Find the angular speed of the propeller in radians per minute. So our angular speed is theta over t. So our theta with 15 revolutions is 15 2 pi's or 30 pi. And divided by t is 1 minute. So 30 pi over 1 is simply 30 pi radians per minute. So that was pretty easy arithmetic there. The linear speed, linear speed is s over t or our arc length. And our arc length, remember, is r times theta. And our theta is 30 pi from above. And our radius, we got to grab the length of that, that blade. So our radius is our blade length, 116 times 30 pi, divided by our time, one minute. Again, put that in your calculator and it will give you 10,933 feet per minute. So there's a couple of sample problems and an introduction to arc length and linear speed and angular speed. And we'll get some more practice with this when I see you in class.